Hi Chahat, how are you doing? Hi Sahil, I am good. How are you? I am doing good. Uh, firstly, thanks for taking your time and you know being a being a guest for our session today and uh, sharing your experiences for this next hour that we'll have. Um, for everyone, Chahat Chahat is working with McKinsey and Company. She is an alumnus of IIM Bangalore uh, two thousand nineteen batch and uh, SRCC two thousand seventeen. Um, she has been very active in academics and non academics through her throughout her bachelor's and master and i'm sure she has a lot of uh, words of wisdom for us in the next hour uh, thanks again chahat uh, thank you thank you sahil yeah so uh, just for uh, just for everyone uh, how we'll structure the conversation is we'll have four parts uh, the first part will be more to do with um, what management consulting is exactly followed up with uh, tahat's experience in this industry and her learnings and then we'll talk about uh, how does one prepare for this this role and uh, what is the recruitment process mostly like so we will cover these four sections and we'll take around 40 minutes to do so uh, post that we'll keep the forum open for uh, q and a we also have received some questions through our registration forms we'll touch upon them as well Meanwhile, if any of you has have questions which uh, which are pertaining to that section, and if you feel it, uh, you know, you want to ask that, please feel free to write it in the chat section, and we'll we'll try to address it uh, maybe immediately or after the section is over. So, yeah, I think then uh, we'll we'll just start off with our first session, uh, which is to learn more about management consulting. And uh, Chahad, the first question is the obvious question: What exactly is management consulting? Okay, I think the words are very intuitive. Management consulting is nothing but consulting to the management or the CXO level of any company, and this uh, can be across any of the sectors, right? This can be public sector, this can be private sector, and this can be NGOs as well. You would see a lot of firms increasingly now investing into NGO projects, which are most of the times uh, not for money, but just to help out NGOs build their presence in the economy. So I think the impact of consulting or what is it's known for is to create an impact to create a short term or a long term impact to solve basic to complex problems but just like an advisor to the company on what to do next right so it it looks it sounds like a a difficult task you know if you want to advise management so i'm sure you know the recruiters uh, recruit uh, people who have this problem solving mindset but apart from that what are the skill sets that you think are required to enter into this industry or work in this industry charan in my opinion uh, there are three major things that any company or any consulting firm is really looking for and those three are leadership which is very important to own up to stand up take ownership take responsibility and drive results the second and the most important is to have passion I think unless you have passion to do something, there would be some roadblocks that you would never be able to cross. So have a passion for something in life, be that academics, be it sports, be it any other thing, but have a drive to excel. And the third and the last, which is very important for any company and which is what consultants are doing, is creating an impact. And when I say that, it's more relevant to people who have worked here, is to not just fulfill what you've been given. So if you're told to do part A. are you willing to take up part a and also do a part of part b or part c are you willing to create an impact beyond what is being told to you outrightly so create a hypothesis go with that go in the field try it out and you know deliver impact to the client right so uh, that that's actually you know uh, uh, really good qualities to have for uh, someone who wants to take uh, take up this role um what are the industries or you know domains in which management consultants usually work in okay i think that answer could involve anything and everything sahil there's no right answer to this question you would see consulting firms doing everything from basic manufacturing to procurement to consumer industries to finance uh, to ngos or even working out with governments to make their five year plans i think the most recent or the most uh, anxious ones now are covid response systems that the companies are working on with various state governments so there's there's no cap on the industries that consultants really work for and as well as uh, the domain right so domain depends on basically what problem the client wants to solve that problem can be extending its distribution network or maybe figuring out the course structure for a new mba school that's coming up 
or like i said making a five year plan for a new country like say sri lanka or any other small asian economy so the domain can be anything so uh, you know it's interesting you we talk about uh, the different areas where a consultant can uh, work in and from what i gather these projects can be smaller projects or larger projects say for nations or smaller projects for some sme which you are working for uh, but typically what does the life cycle of a project look like what are the stages which come inside a life cycle of a project okay i think uh, the answer to this is a little different it is really not dependent on which industry you are working for it is more dependent on the problem statement as to how the life cycle will look like if it is a strategy piece which is like a short piece that you want to just build out a five year plan for the you know distribution network for a company it might as well be a one month or a two month piece whereas if you want to do a study with say cost optimization save xx crore for my company in the next two years then that pro- uh, project might extend to up to two years as well but what is uh, interesting and what keeps you going in consulting is that as a consultant especially at the level where you normally join either an undergrad or a postgrad you are expected to be on a study or a project for not more than 6 to 8 months so you go there you handle a part of the work stream for 6 months and then you hand it over to somebody else who comes in and joins so you sort of have the flow going right you you keep on doing new things you keep on moving around industries you keep on switching to teams so i think uh, for a consultant or for a person who is new joining the firm the life cycle would be anywhere between 6 to 8 months or even shorter but the projects can extend up to 2 years as well right so uh, uh, you know so if, if we are uh, saying that we go and we pay play this part and then we hand it off to other uh, another team or or sometimes you know you have to do a lot of collaboration with the client as well um, you know uh, go to their side talk to their people understand their problems etc get their data so in general how collaborative is a consultant role is is it is it like you know um, uh, at every stage do you need to collaborate with different folks or is it like once you have all the inputs and then you work on your own and then give the results I think it is twofold. I can call it to be a very collaborative role, but then at the end of the day, it's about shouldering individual responsibility because it is you who has to individually drive results. You are responsible for what your work stream answer looks like, and your team has nothing to say in that. Right? You you are handling a part of the answer, and you have entire responsibility to fetch it. now obviously to drive that answer because you're working for somebody else you need to be very collaborative you in most cases need to sit out with the client on their client side and get data get results understand the problem statement first understand their views of the economy how they think things are moving because they are experts at the end of the day all they need is a little bit of a direction so i think right. it's collaborative in terms of asking the client asking your team for help asking experts for help but you own up the answer at the end of the day right uh and and this this sound like a very daunting task you know to uh, to to solve someone else's problem uh so uh, you know it's 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 uh, it's something which i think a lot of people a lot of elderly folks have asked me when when i try to explain them what consulting is and it is you know the companies are actually working in that field for so many years why do they need to hire someone out from you know from outside the industry to sort of come and help them so how how do you you know are you expected to have that domain knowledge beforehand or is it uh, how does that that take place um uh, i think at the level we generally join sahil you are not really expected to have domain knowledge because uh, they know you are a fresher or you've worked in a different environment altogether and you might be thrown into a very new industry right so i might not have any idea about logistics but i might be doing a logistics project and the clients uh, for most of them at least know this out of you so what they are expecting is to actually uh, undo their biases that they have for them they have been in the industry they have heard from their mentors that things are done in a certain way what you bring is a fresh perspective can you twitch it why can't i do this and that might be a very small question and you might hear back a laugh right he no aise yeah. nahi hota hai but but the answer is why not you make them think that can't i do it this way i learned this in pharma can i apply it here in logistics why not so that why not or that inquisitiveness that you bring to the table is what clients really appreciate 
to push them right to have small questions in mind to have small suggestions a um, a small twitch might help them a lot and you never know because they have always thought that this is irreplaceable or this is something that can never change can you right. challenge that so i think uh, domain knowledge in some sense of the work stream that you are doing yes but that your team will help you with otherwise i think what you bring to the forum is your problem solving skills right and and i think it makes sense right most of these companies like mckinsey they have been doing this for over so many years and they have a lot of might be able to reach out to different folks within the company who might have worked on civil industries so that that knowledge is sort of consumed elsewhere also uh so yeah i think uh, so moving on to our next question it's 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 uh, it's sort of a myth which we want you to sort of know if, if, you know if it is a myth in general or if we can bust it um is that uh, consulting involves a lot of travel only if you like traveling then you should take up this role what are your thoughts on that um i would not disagree completely with the fact consulting definitely involves travel and that's the sole reason because you have to be at your client side and what i mean by that is that if i am working for a say pharma client who is based out of say chennai then i have to work out of chennai that is what is expected out of me but having said that if you are staying in bombay if your base office or base location as they call it is bombay and you want to for some reason do only studies which are based out of that area the team makes it possible the partners the firm respects that you have personal commitments be it in form of something that you want to pursue or be it in form of a family pressure that you want to be catering to they respect that they will only sort of give you uh, bombay studies and the second the best thing that i find about it is if i am staffed on a chennai study and i want to stay over the weekend just to explore the city the firm makes it possible as well so you can stay over at your client location the entire duration of the project you don't need to necessarily travel every weekend back to your home location or your hometown so i think uh, it involves traveling but it's upon you if you want to travel right uh that's actually you know that might help a lot of folks who have had this question in their mind uh and and we come to the last question of this this section chahar um which is how exactly is the work culture in consulting firms how much ownership do does one as an individual contributor have in their module or their project okay i think in terms of the working culture it is a uh, very social in some sense that you get to talk to people they it, there is actually no boundaries if you have a doubt if you have some questions you can directly even whatsapp your partner saying i have this problem i think you mentioned something in the call would you have leads or i want to connect to this startup doing xx things i heard you might have some contacts can you help and it's the other way around which is more surprising right out of blue a partner might just call in to ask how you doing how's things at home how's covid going you know treating you and those are sort of interesting conversations where they try to understand what you are doing what is it new that you are exploring so for example i had this partner conversation where we started discussing about this nike training club which is out of the blue right we have 10 other things to do 10 other work commitments but we're just taking out those 10 15 minutes to have a good conversation and sort of build in a relationship and that i think is the essence of any consulting firm uh because they value the relationships even if you move out of the firm so that sort of keeps it going i think on the other part when you say about ownership you are completely responsible as i said uh, earlier you are 100% responsible to drive the answer to your work stream if you have a particular hypothesis and the partner has another bias in mind he will never stop you from saying what you want to he will say i think it can be done this way but if you still strongly believe that no i think this is a better way to do it i want to pursue this he will always let you go ahead he will say go try it out if you fail then you go come back to mine if you don't fail it's great it's a learning for me so i think complete ownership of the work you're doing and in that sense the team is always there to help you the team the partners the experts out of your study are always there to support you in anything you want to do so uh, complete ownership but uh, managed by a lot of help from outside is what i want to say right so so if i had to summarize that uh, the culture is fairly open uh, a lot of relationship building happens uh, over the period of time as well and uh, Uh, and you don't really uh, apparently feel that hierarchy coming in uh, is what i gathered 
and with respect to work uh, even though you might be an individual contributor or you know working as a team but that ownership accountability and responsibility is on you fairly high to deliver what the what the expectation of the client is so yeah i think with that with that we'll have uh, we'll have touched upon all the things we wanted to touch, uh, touch upon the first section chahar and uh, we'll come to the second section which is more about you uh, which is your experiences and your learnings uh, in this field and uh, so so to begin with can you tell us about a bit of your journey in mckinsey and how did you decide that you want to get into consulting okay i think uh, my journey at mckinsey has been quite rewarding in less than a year i have almost been on four projects till now uh, i have worked across pharma i have worked across finance logistics construction a lot of them and uh, all of them with newer teams right so new managers new partners new associates new uh, j ones so i think it has been very very rewarding it it is as you said a very steep learning curve you you get to move a lot of things a very in a very very fast pace so i think that has been a uh, really really rewarding for me really really encouraging for me to at least continue for a few more years in consulting uh the second part of your question as to uh, how exactly did i decide into getting into consulting for me it was sort of an elimination method and that might not work for a lot of you here but for me that has always worked pretty well uh, i interned with a finance company during my summers uh, summer placements at i am bangalore and i sort of realized that i wanted to be in a culture where i have more ownership for the answer and when i say answer i mean the final answer that is actually taken to the client if i have a hypothesis unless it's proven wrong i want to at least present it to the larger board and i want to work in a situation where there is social relationship building that's happening i can learn from others i can talk to them about their experiences and it's not just to work all the time uh, so finance was out that time uh, i didn't have much interest in marketing for that matter i the brands didn't excite me the logos didn't excite me that much so i said that okay not this maybe and prodman and genman again sort of looked like uh, experiences that a, a work ex person might want to either go for so i thought i want to do something that is encouraging that is challenging that keeps me driven for at least the initial years in corporate life and so consulting was the answer for me right i think uh, that's that's very well summarized chahar and a uh, very you know uh, honest answer to that we have one question from the audience uh, shalu uh Sha- one second shalu is asking us uh, what what's the best thing you like about consulting i think uh, the best thing is that even if you get bored or you get frustrated on a particular project because of any reason you you know that it's going to end soon so <laughs> you know it keeps the hype going that okay fine it's it's just two more weeks and then i'll have something more interesting i'll work with the team i want to do consumer for a long time i'll get to do that uh so i think that uh, passion or that drive for newness uh keeps me going that's a very valid point uh, and i think a lot of people actually nowadays do look for uh, challenging roles different roles uh in you know uh, over time rather than sort of working on the same module they would want to have different experiences and probably uh so i think that that way it really helps uh, in the consulting domain uh so we'll come to our second myth uh, chahat uh, which which you can probably answer working uh, with your in your experience is that uh, consultants really you know really have to work very long hours um so yeah <laughs> i again i have a dual answer to this uh consulting is surely not a 9 to 5 job if you think you will sit in the office for uh, 7 8 hours straight and then it's home happy time that's not the case but having said that right i have seen my friends in finance in fraud man in gen man being in no better situations they have worked on longer hours than i have they have had worse weekends than i have for me at least in the last one year i have not worked for more than two or three weekends and that too minimal work right so like putting in three four hours of works and that is what i am calling weekend work uh so i think weekends are sacrosanct which was very very important to me and i am getting it uh in terms of the work yes you should expect almost a all night or if there is a stairco or a cxo meeting in the coming week or the next day especially uh but otherwise i think it totally depends on how your team wants to manage if it is a very short piece like a four week piece then you should expect it to be a little bit uh, you know aggressive 
in terms of the working hours but if it's a longer implementation piece then life would be chill you would almost go out for team dinners every second day so it's it's i think a myth as well as but you should be ready to compromise some days right so a valid point uh, chahat that uh, you know it might vary based on your project but one should be open to you know not expect just a 9 to 5 job uh, that's a very valid insight also uh, coming to to more of your work chahat uh, in your projects if you have worked on right now uh, or you know folks around you what are the various tools or platforms does you know you require uh, working as a consultant uh i think there are no tools as such style that are required uh most of the work is primarily done on excel and it's basic problem solving right so in most cases you have to sit up with the client understand the problem and just think out loud uh mm-hmm. that thinking out li- loud might involve some google search some wikipedia knowledge some expert calls or some analysis within the team uh but there there are not really any codes that you are formulating or any you know harsh excels that you are creating on it's very basic excel anybody who's done an undergrad or uh, a basic excel course in undergrad or post grad would surely be able to do it so it's a culmination if i have to say of excel powerpoint and your brain so that's it right i think but we do require a lot of um... platforms where we need to do a lot of research right i think that is something which the company has themselves provide you with uh, with all those platforms where you can research more about industry the market etc but apart from that from what i gather is uh, it's mostly uh, you know how you think and how you present so for that you don't require anything more than an excel or a powerpoint so Karen, yeah i think what do you mean by research uh, two folds to it and that might interest a few of you here one is the internal uh, resources that the firm has sort of culminated so after end of a study if you think there's some good insight coming out of the best practices then you sort of create a pd out of it which is circulated to the entire firm so anybody in need can just you know type sort of keywords and get that out uh the second part obviously sort of google search understanding what the news is about a particular company or a competitor or how the industry is doing and again you might have resources for it like the knowledge center for most of the top consulting firms or you might have to do it yourself right uh, i think we have a couple of questions from the audience we might want to take it uh, one question from aman is that there is another myth that uh, consultants who are hired as consulting companies who hire consultants uh usually hire toppers in their batches uh, i know for a fact that you were one of them but is it ge- is it a general uh, case or is it just uh, you know uh, yeah um so aman let me put a 80 20 rule to it which is a very common term that consultants usually use uh i am not saying that toppers are not recruited but if i have to say that only toppers are recruited for consulting roles that's also not true so out of 10 people uh eight might have been the toppers of their batch or the high rankers at least uh whereas there would be other two who had incredible good profiles and i will come to them a little later as sahil mentioned uh yeah. who might as well get shortlist and would convert them and would do great so once you're in the firm nobody is asking you if you were a topper or not nobody really cares because you're at the same level but to get through it uh yes i think there are some c- certain sort of things that firms are looking for and uh, maybe we can come to it when we take up the broader question of recruitments right so yeah ayush i think you just posted a question we will be covering this in our subsequent section uh, where we're talking about your preparation and uh, and your uh, uh, how the recruiters recruit uh, i think there was one more question uh so are you are you allotted projects based on uh on your availability or is it random or is it based on experience vishesh is asking this question uh so vishesh it is a i think culmination of a lot of things uh the team which is working on the project essentially the manager or the partner uh sort of looks at the profiles which are available to be staffed so if i am not on a current study i am uh sort of really free or joining the firm Uh, a lot of people will get my profiles and everybody would right irrespective of the previous work experience that i have in my case it was zero but even otherwise uh, the companies would sort of look out for roles on what you really have to do so for example i did a lot of excel and analysis or model building in my internship and uh, the manager on one study knew about this because he was sort of the coordinator for the placements so he took me on the study because there was a one work stream which was sort of excel heavy 
and he needed somebody who could completely take up charge when he's called uh so those kinds of things happen but more often than not what i have seen uh, going ahead is that people want or people have a preference for the kind of uh, other person that they want to work with right so they might require somebody who's uh, who's very jolly who's all the time fun like you know happy fun go around with or organizing parties or going out for drinks uh whereas there might be other teams who might be looking for something else they might be looking for people they had earlier had a conversation with or shown interest in a particular industry so i would say it's a mix of both but if you really have a strong preference to do something like i have uh for doing consumer i reached out to a few managers and they have always approached me whenever there's a staffing opportunity i wasn't free whenever they did but uh, at least they always looked out they said that this is new opportunity if you are free uh, let me know if you want to join this so i think uh, showing your interest will surely help okay i think just to follow up to that is what shalu is asking uh, if someone approaches you for a project do you uh, and you do not feel excited about it do you have the option to say no to that project uh so shalu that's very common and that might be again a factor of a lot of things i think in the first study at the firm you might not have that choice but as you go ahead right and you have options in hand saying that these are three studies and i'm more excited about the third one so if the first manager is sort of asking you to join his study you always have the option and i did it almost like two days back i said i am more interested in this industry i have done this one earlier so i would want to take that up uh and you don't really have to be apologetic for it right it is about your personal development as much as it is about firm's development they will find the right set of people but you have to be very particular on what you want to really pursue right well, i think that's very well uh, very well said that and uh, it it makes sense also uh, you know that so that both your interest and the company's interest align uh, we have one question uh, which i think abhinav asked which we also had in our section was can you tell us a little bit more about your first study okay so just for everyone who doesn't know abhinav was uh, a member or a part of my bigger team on my first study um and obviously they are inside jokes so i is asking that but let me just give you an overview of, of what my first study was so my first study was a long implementation piece it was a cost optimization study uh basically our uh, problem statement was to solve uh, or save uh, xx crores for the client in a span of say 2 years uh again the problem stream was broken down for four associates on the firm uh two people were given direct costs to handle so direct costs for a pharma company uh one was given indirect costs in terms of rent or electricity or travel expenses and i was handling the manpower cost and the international entity costs for the company uh so when you handle that right you have to drive an answer as to how you will eliminate uh and being very blunt here a certain part of the company's workforce a certain part of the client's workforce which you think is sort of redundant or their roles can be replaced by somebody else in the firm how do you come up with an answer they are uh, for example breaking breaking down that problem statement we knew we had to eliminate or rationalize the uh, gm above structure so general managers vice president vice presidents presidents so on so forth and that too across the span right so in india in uh, asia in europe in america all of them so you sort of see what roles they are at what is the span of control of each manager uh, are they doing similar works is that work really required can one manager not handle three instead of just one you know a uh, person below them uh you do those sort of analysis you do some excel modeling you find out and you come to a smaller number so instead of a 400 uh sample size that you earlier had you have to now analyze it 50 people and those 50 people you sit with the chro or the chro minus 1 and you sort of understand their roles better are they dispensable when did we recruit them is there a policy saying that we cannot uh, you know uh lay off them in next two years so on so forth so i think that was uh, more about my first study that's that's very interesting to have something as your first assignment chart uh, and yeah. thanks for sharing that experience with us um i think uh, i think there is a question again by vishesh i work on excel there have been many projects which have huge data which takes months to process um is is it similar in consulting or 
Okay. Yeah. So I think Vishesh, that is really not the case. Uh, in most situations, I have not seen people really juggling with Excel. Uh, having said that, there are other uh, sort of associate companies that every firm has. So if there's a really big data crunch that you have got to do, then you usually outsource it to them. Uh, they are a larger part of McKinsey, so as to say, but you sort of send them out the data, you send them your specific request on what needs to be done, and then sort of free from your head for the next one day until they deliver the results. So you are not required to juggle with Excel for a month or so. Oh, that's that's good, and I I hope that answers Vishesh's question. Uh, we'll come back to our uh, second module which we had, and uh, there are a couple of more questions which we want to uh, know about Chahat your experience uh, and uh, and in McKinsey. The the next question is: Can you explain the hierarchy in a consulting firm? You know, how does one progress over the years? Okay, I think uh, the. the front end client facing role the lowest level or the beginners level that you generally join in as an undergrad is usually called a business analyst uh, most people uh, seek to pursue their masters or mbas after 2 to 3 years as a business analyst but otherwise you can continue in the firm as well uh, as an mba graduate or masters degree holder you join join as a junior associate and these are terminologies that would be specific to mckinsey uh you can assume the same hierarchy but with different names uh you remain a junior associate for 2 years in the firm after which you are sort of promoted to being called an associate again for the next 2 years 1 or 2 years you remain an associate and then you become an engagement manager an engagement manager is generally somebody who is a uh, completely owning up a particular client he is at the client side all the days he is uh completely or 100% invested in building up relationship with that client owning up all the work streams under him and mm-hmm. delivering the final problem statement result uh post that is an associate partner again 2 to 3 years as manager or even more sometimes and then you become an associate partner an associate partner would usually have industry expertise so a pharma associate partner would usually be on 2 to 3 studies so he would be managing 2 to 3 studies which have similar sort of problem statements uh, uh just handling work through the em again not getting on the ground all the time then you have a partner and then finally a senior partner uh those people obviously have a more more uh, bigger task of you know just managing uh, cxos or the in most cases just one or two people in the company who are the major stakeholders building up relationships getting up new projects uh extending the projects which are there which is most common to most consultings uh so so on so forth right i think that that really gives a very clear picture chahat on the progression uh, uh you know in a consulting firm and i think uh, in the interest of time we move to the two other sections which we have i think and which most of the viewers will be more interested about is how does one prepare uh, for this industry and uh, how what do recruiters look for so we'll come to the third section which is preparation and um, in in terms of preparation the first question is uh, why should one join or not join consulting okay uh let me just again you know bring three positives to it and three negatives to it and you can decide for yourself if that really works for you i think in terms of the positives uh, one or very valid thing is you work across industries you work with different sets of people you gain a lot of knowledge in a very short period of time and when i say a lot of knowledge i am not necessarily saying you get expertise in that industry or domain uh but you sort of have enough to build up a conversation uh with any cxo right uh you have experience you can uh, pull your experiences from different industries and apply to the uh, current problem statements so i think that is one second uh is which is very i think essential or which is very known is that it's very steep learning curve so you sort of develop very good problem solving skills and you would not know that you start solving uh problems outside of work in very structured manners so you analyze the problem you just understand what's going on you understand the other person you handle people better for sure because you don't know how your client at the other side is going to be like so i think that is second for me and the third is the kind of ownership that you get again uh, my experience might be limited but at least uh, in my internship i didn't find much ownership in terms of driving the end result 
uh consulting gives you a lot of ownership your partners your managers would almost you know throw you in the bin with the cx so they just carry it out and this would be your first week or rather the first day go hold this meeting by yourself do you really need me and that rhetorical question right you really don't need them you can build up that conversation it might take time it might not happen over one week or one month um uh, but it'll soon happen and that will give you the confidence that yes i am owning it up if i get results if i save 10 crores today it is my savings it is almost equal into saying that you know i own this so i think that has really worked for me or why people should join uh why people should not join and i know a lot of my friends who really crave for it is working on the ground right at the end of the day you are a person who is behind the desk and just helping out the other person or the client carry out things if you are really the implementer or the person who wants to be on the ground and execute it uh then consulting might not be the role at the end of the day you you are sort of uh relying on another person to carry out what you think is best uh second thing which we said earlier or discussed earlier it's not a 9 to 5 job uh be ready for challenges be ready for uh long work hours be ready for aggression be ready to you know have too many things coming up and not being able to handle them juggling day in day out on work life or personal life so be ready for challenges that is very important and the third one i think uh, for people looking at stability uh, although i personally believe that in the early uh, years of your you know corporate life you should not really worry about it but you you are really looking for stability uh, sort of you know same working environment same set of people all around uh, a very decent hierarchy i want to do the same kind of work for a long time uh, then this is not the job for you in most cases you would be required to explore so if you don't like exploring if you don't like working with new people or i'm not saying you should like it but if you really dislike it then you should not take up consulting i think that that very insightful jahat and i think with all of these folks you know a lot of our viewers who would be joining these schools or uh, planning to take one of the other careers maybe in consulting or in any other domain uh, this information should really help them uh, make their choice better so yeah i think that that's really well uh, well crafted uh, uh what, coming to the next question jahat uh, i think you have touched upon it before uh, but uh, does do we really need an mba to get into one of these consulting companies uh, or or you know if people from other other industries other domains can also sort of enter into these roles okay uh so as i touched upon earlier you can get a front end client facing role which is equivalent of what you get after you do an mba you can get it after your undergraduate as well uh the only thing is uh, the progression might be a little longer which is a year two or three longer than a normal you know uh, to reach the level where an mba usually joins at uh but having said that uh, at least mckenzie has partners at the firm who don't hold a mba degree so i think that very well answers the question yeah i think that 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 uh and uh coming to the last question in this uh, in this section of, of preparation is that a lot of folks right now because of covid 19 have more time on their hands uh and you know they they uh, they plan if, if they plan to prepare for a, a role in consulting how do you suggest they use this time productively any books or courses uh, or you know any material you suggest them to go through okay uh so i think sahil there's no particular books that can you, you know really help you ace consulting as a career uh having knowledge or an opinion about something is really important and that necessarily uh, shouldn't come from books right you can go up search on the web you should just be updated about what's happening and you should always have a point of view on things uh what do you think is going wrong what do you think is going right and that might be on very small topics or very large ones uh i think that really helps having those conversations with people who have similar or you know very discerning in interests that would help uh apart from that if you really have so much time on your hand i would uh i would personally encourage you to pick up something that really drives your passion right that could be music that could be art that could be dancing uh what people at consulting are looking for is your drive for excellence and that's not only for academics i see some questions coming up about academics being the only important thing uh that is not really the case uh consultants 
or consulting firms are really looking for people who want to drive excellence that excellence might be a career in modeling a career in music uh anything that you know sorts of keeps you going makes you wake up every morning and want to achieve something bigger uh do that find your passion this is the only time possibly that you can spend at home with your loved ones do things that you really want to do and not you know uh, unnecessarily earn for something that is not something that you really want in life so follow that uh, drive excellence build up your uh, resumes and i'll come to that more and building up resumes would not necessarily be academics uh, so do things that interest you and do best at them right i think uh, that captures it very well chahar uh, the key takeaway is being you know uh, be updated about what is happening around in the world Uh, be curious and uh, and and follow what you are really you know passionate about and if you can uh, you know you can show that you are really striving for excellence uh, that really makes your profile sort of stand out yeah. so i think yeah i think that that concludes our third section and we'll come on to the fourth section which is uh, how does one prepare for recruitment and what do recruiters you know look for uh, in this and uh, coming to uh, this uh, the first question is uh, for the people especially for the people who are who are who will be going to school uh, you know joining the batch of 2022 in mba or you know uh, uh, passing out from uh, undergrad uh, can you throw some light on the entire consulting hiring process and what are the different stages in the hiring process okay um so my process would be very very specific to most mba colleges but i think most of it would apply to an undergrad college as well um so i think the first step which is very obvious is you sort of apply on the portal both of the company as well as your placement uh, the college placement cell you apply there and you get a shortlist that is uh, one you know one or the most easiest of the tasks in the entire process uh, the next thing is most uh, consulting firms at least the top one assign a buddy to you and a buddy is somebody who's been with the firm for one or two years uh mostly has similar interest to you either from the same institution or uh from the same background uh or somebody who has similar interests in you know uh, the passions or the hobbies that you follow so that you have a healthy conversation you gel up with the person you try to understand the firm outside of just the dinners or the official meets that you have so you have your query sorted and you sort of prepare with them the next step uh which i think is again very peculiar to a few b schools is that most of these consulting firms host what they call as official dinners uh so they will come down to the campus or they will take you to a hotel and they will actually have a round table dinner with all the candidates all the shortlisted candidates there will be everybody from a manager to a partner to a senior partner who would actually come down answer your questions talk about their experiences say about what they really want in a candidate and any sort of questions that you have you can get them answered so it's like more about knowing the candidate in a personal forum uh and the last process obviously the one that you have to ace is the interviews uh for iims in particular uh, there's a cap on the amount of time that every candidate can be held for by a company so for example in iim bangalore every candidate can be interviewed for a maximum of 1 hour by any company and that would usually translate to two or three rounds of interviews of 20 to 30 minutes each right i think that that captures uh, the stages very well chahar and uh, double clicking on the interview process uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, case interviews which uh, you know you have to sort of uh, prepare for uh, so how can you throw some light on what are case interviews and how do you prepare for it and uh, yeah okay uh so the interview is not a normal hr interview or any interview where they are going to ask you what's happening in china what's happening in japan no you're not supposed to know them uh these are very very simple case interviews in most cases and what i mean by case interview is that the partner or the manager or the interviewer in your case is going to give you a simplified problem statement of the project that he's working on So, for example, he will tell you that I am working for a pharma company, and I want to save X X crores for my client from the uh, manpower cost. Tell me how can I do that? A problem statement or a case interview question, as we uh, usually call it in the B school, is very simple. All that they are looking for, in my opinion, is the problem solving structure. What is the first or the first three things that you look at when you are giving a question? 
how does your mind really run to gun for an answer is it running for an answer are you asking the appropriate questions at all times or are you just sort of hurrying to get the final answer and let me be very clear right there is no final answer the project might have gone in a particular manner but the interviewer might be happy if you show them a new outlook so what he is looking for is how do you approach a problem are you ready for questions that might be concerning are you ready to undo your biases in most cases and understand the bigger problem statement so i think that is what will really help you ace an interview right and uh, chahat i think we have a question from ayush on the cases so uh, what are these cases majorly related to are they related to profitability or market entry or there are other different kinds of cases also so ayush i think it's very dependent on the college most colleges have their own case books of how the cases have been in the past few years for example i am bangalore and ahmedabad everybody publishes one apart from that there are books like case interview scrap case in point that you can look at uh having said that a lot of partners will try and give you easy cases and easy cases might be profitability cases because everybody sort of you know very familiar with the equation of revenues minus cost is equal to profit so that sort of bridges the gap where a candidate is very nervous and not able to say anything uh but having said that a case can be anything right uh, a case can be that if i want to bring in the best in class practices for my client post covid how should i do that or what will be the gdp of the country post uh, covid and uh, there are no there are no right books there are no resources that you could have memorized for this question and that is not what the partner is looking for he is not looking for you to quote a un study saying this is the gdp drop that will happen he is looking for you to actually think about this problem how you would have answered it casually if a teacher or a friend would have come up with this question uh, so i think uh, the questions can be anything what you see more frequently though is yes profitability cases right so i think that really helps with the you know the the uh, the breadth of the different case questions which are possible uh coming to the next point chahat is um is you know uh, the shortlisting process you told that it is usually the easiest step but i think the most of the people get filtered out on that itself and uh, so what how do you suggest can one someone frame their resume or what does what can one do uh, for uh, you know helping themselves get a higher probability of getting shortlisted okay uh so sahil in my opinion um, anybody who's looking at a resume right and when i say anybody is actually lo- looking at a lot of resumes at the same time there are four uh, broad buckets that he usually has in mind one is academics for sure that cannot be undone second in most cases is work experience uh what is the work what is the past experience that you have done the third in my opinion again is leadership uh what is the sort of leadership qualities that you have exhibited either in your undergraduation uh, college or your post graduate college or even your work uh, environment and the last and equally important is the extra curriculars that you have been a part of and what have you achieved there i think uh if you know i were to shortlist if or if i were to see how shortlisting really works i would say you should have an outstanding in at least one of these four uh, that you really stand out from the crowd that is there from the 500 other resumes that somebody has to read you really stand out in at least one of these four areas and at least you are fairly good in other two so when i say them you have to be fairly good in everything but uh, one should be a spike is what they usually called it where you really catch the attention of the person you have something in your resume which most of the other people won't and that might be a different uh, undergrad course that you have done that might be a very spectacular performance in the work ex space that you have carried down and when i say that right it shouldn't be just what you are required to do in terms of the job description are you willing to take a step ahead are you willing to create impact if you have leave a are you going to your manager and saying i can do this as well can it give, can i give it a try and it's not about uh, you know s- sort of getting success every time even failure stories are equally inspiring uh, but you should have fun is my sense right i think that that captures uh, uh, a vast breadth of for the uh, for the question we asked chahat that uh, you know how does one prepare for the resume and you mentioned that you know every resume has different sections and uh, yes you know uh, all are very important but you need to have something which helps you stand out 
and it might not necessarily be academics it can be your extracurriculars as well or it can be your work experience but in that pool of say 500 resumes or 1000 resumes which companies are looking for there should be something which catches their eye and i think yeah. that that sort of uh, helps you get shortlisted which is i think the first and the most important step to actually getting a role in the consulting firm uh because uh, here you know it's it is it is a very short attention span which people usually get to review the resume and you need to really create that impact in the first uh, go itself uh yeah i think with that we have come to a close uh, with the pre decided questions and we'll take a couple of questions which we received from uh, the others as well uh, uh you know chahat and uh, one of the questions was that uh, do people uh, prefer uh, do these consulting companies prefer people with a specific background uh, uh, or you know or over the others is it like say uh, from what i understand is the question means is, is it en- uh, you know they'll prefer engineers over commerce grads or commerce grads over art grads or something like that is there anything that of that sort i think that is really not the case i have a partner who is actually an mbbs degree holder uh what i sense is that consultants actually love diversity diversity in profiles and that includes your degree of undergrad uh in most cases there's a very peculiar reason right so if you are engineered in a particular way so all of you are engineers for example uh you are wired to think in a particular manner in most cases whereas a comma graduate might just jump in between and question the very smallest of assumptions that you thought was a fact so i think they love diversity if you have a profile if you have an undergraduate degree which really stands out i think you are better off than the other 15 in the batch right i think that also covers one of the question i think aman had asked was uh, he had an international degree and uh, he was uh, you know asking if uh, that uh, would uh, you know how it would be uh, seen by recruiters and i think uh, from your answer to start that it, it does not really matter uh yep. but it, as long as his profile sort of stands out and he shows he exhibits uh that uh, pursuit of excellence i think that, that that should not be a problem correct yes uh, coming to another of the question is that uh, someone has asked uh i think abhijit asked that uh very experienced professionals right there there might be a lot of people who have 5 6 years 7 years in a particular industry say uh, you know work is say in uh, oil and gas and uh, they now want to try getting into a consulting company how do how difficult or easy it is for these people who have a very niche experience to get into uh, to get into consulting okay so generally what i see is that uh, usually people with a industry experience in a particular domain join as knowledge specialists and their hierarchy is almost very similar to somebody like us and we are generally called integrative consultants because we work across industries and domains uh, a pharma specialist or an oil and gas specialist for example might join in that particular practice of the company and might be a little limited in terms of the projects he is doing so he might be doing oil and gas or related industries like he might be required in a cement factory or or a natural uh, natural gas factory something like that right? right but if he is really excited to you know approach somebody and do a fix study i think uh, there are options for it you might not be considered a knowledge specialist and you might be working with another undergrad higher at that level uh, but if your interest says that you want to do it i think that shouldn't be a bottleneck right so i think in in a way it also plays out well also because someone who has an industry experience and expertise and uh, the company consulting companies would probably want to leverage that in case they have yeah. relevant projects in that industry as well and i think that uh, answers abhijit's question uh, i think we are almost up uh, with time chahat and i think we will conclude the session at that um, and again let me thank you uh, again for for this hour that you you know shared your experiences with us uh, the team from sicometer thanks you a lot and really uh, wishes you well uh, going ahead in the future So thank you thank you for your time and thank you for joining thank us Chahat. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope to seek a lot of uh, mentorship myself from this platform <laughs> ahead. Thank you. And uh, for any of these folks who still have questions that have not been answered, uh, please feel free to DM us those questions and we'll try to get them answered. And uh, and uh, thank you Aman. Thank you that you found this helpful. Uh, also please uh, follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on Instagram. We'll be coming up with more such sessions on different industries and different topics. as well 
and uh, looking forward to having you guys on subsequent sessions thank you again chahat and uh, thank you uh, for everyone who has joined this uh, session thank you thank you thank you everyone keep following the platform thank you bye